While 80,000 thoughts will bombard you today, just one conversation can make you 1% better. If you walk around with your nose in the air, you're going to end up flat on your face. But if you're content to simply be yourself, you'll become more than yourself. Thanks for hanging with us today as we discuss what erodes and cultivates growth, making us 1% better. Welcome to 1% Better with Mark Lucas and Brandon Maurer. Welcome to 1% Better. It is good to be back. Brandon and I, we've been gone for about a month, I think. Uh, yeah, yeah. So we're back. Brandon's gotten taller. I am trying to grow a beard that looks nothing like his beard. My son this morning said, Dad, you probably should have shaved. <laughs> but today we're so excited to have a guest with us. We occasionally bring on guests, and Jennifer and I were introduced through Facebook, actually, and I have the privilege of being able to meet people from all across the valley to be able to navigate conversations on radio and podcast and YouTube. And the conversation that we had was so beautiful when we chatted for the first time over the phone. And it was this beautiful conversation understanding what does it look like for all of us listening in right now to be able to trust God and to be able to have obedience. I think to some degree every single day, there are moments that God is obviously leading us. There's moments where we have to walk by faith and not by sight. There's moments where God, as we pray and as we feel God giving us direction, we have to trust him. We have to figure out how we obey because I think at the end of the day, we want to obey, but I know a lot of times I get in the way or my circumstances get in the way, fear gets in the way. There's things that get in the way but ultimately, today, we get to dive into a conversation with our guest, Jennifer Ferguson, and really talk about trust and obedience. So, Jennifer, thank you so much for being our guest today. Yeah, thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. It's good to have you in. Uh, when we connected over the phone, it meant so much to me. And we have such a big but yet small world. If we really just ask God to connect us to people, as we chatted over the phone, uh, I ended up actually having you on speaker in the car. My oldest daughter, Kaylin, was about to head off to college where she is now. And we had a small little window for her and I to go grab lunch. And I knew I had this phone call. So my daughter, my oldest daughter, Kaylin, was able to hear this phone call. And I can't wait for the listeners now, Jennifer, to hear the journey that God's taking you on. Because I know as my daughter at 18, when she heard it, it was such a breath of fresh air to know that there is joy in being obedient to the Lord. There is beautiful joy when we trust God. So why don't you share a little bit of the journey, a little bit of the story of what God's been doing in your life lately? Okay. Well, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. So it's always way easier to be obedient when God is really, really clear. And as you heard with my story, he was so super clear that made it much easier for me. Uh, but he told me in September of 2021, he started putting Arizona and the word move in front of my face all the time. And I lived in Kansas City. So um, I didn't want to move to Arizona. I had grandkids in Kansas City really close to me 10 minutes away and my kids and everything. And so I was even said I would never move to Arizona. And then I said, well, unless God told me to. And it wasn't shortly after that that he did just that, and it was so clear. Um, I walked into church one day, and there was a big red banner hanging from the ceiling, and it said, move. Brandon's looking at me like I'm crazy. I said, that's really <laughs> cute, God. As you sent me a literal sign. A big um, banner. It's red even. <laughs> it was <laughs> yeah. big red, chief's red. Yeah. Uh, so I went home that day. There, the church was getting ready to do a building campaign, so they were talking about moving, but I went home and I asked God, like, if you're really sending me or telling me to move to Arizona, you're going to give me a ministry. So could you at least tell me what that is? And right then on the radio, Caleb started to introduce a man from Phoenix, Arizona. No accident. Gary Webb with OCJ Kids Ministries, and he mentors foster kids aging out of the system. And I'm a foster mom in Kansas. So uh, I was like, well, all righty then. <laughs> so the next day I got up and I'm doing my prayers and my devotionals and me of little faith. I go, okay, God, but if this is really, really you, I need to see that word move just one more time. 
And I get done with my Bible study and I open Facebook and you know how their algorithms are. You see the same people that you see all the time. But I saw somebody I never see on there and and it was one of my realtor partners from work and she said something like, we're not promised tomorrow, so what you have to do, move now. Mm -hmm. And I shut Facebook immediately and said, I hear you. So there were many, many more instances just like that throughout my story, as you were able to hear, um, where God clearly was telling me to go. And I did not want to leave my grandchildren. And I told my eight-year-old granddaughter, Ellie, I said, you know, that Grammy's been called to, to move and, and God's telling me to go to Arizona. And she said, Grammy, you can't be like Jonah. You have to go. Wow. Wow. And That's cool. at eight. At eight. She's eight. Whew. Yeah. Shortly thereafter, she was afraid I was near Russia and Ukraine and in, in the war. She didn't know where Arizona was. <laughs> <laughs> so, Russia, Ukraine, Arizona. You know, yeah, it's kind all of the all same. <laughs> but um, trusting God, you know, he gave me the story of Abraham when he told him to leave his country. He didn't even tell him where to go. At least he told me where to go. Right. Didn't tell me why. Um, I struggled with what am I going to do? How am I going to live? I can barely afford my bills in Kansas. I just bought a house. How am I going to afford rent in Arizona? God miraculously provided a home, brand new home, three bedroom, two bath, just to myself with no rent, nothing, just go live there. And so that was another amazing reassurance that that I'm where I'm supposed to be and he'll work all things out, just trust him. So I have trusted him thus far and here I am. So So beautiful. Isn't that beautiful, Brandon? That's amazing. Thank you for sharing that on air. Yeah, Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, I think... I think for me, and then I want to hear from Brandon, I think, well, for all of us listening in, I think some of the things that come to my mind when I first heard your story and now when I hear it again, I think that there's this desire for all of us to large degrees, if not completely, where we want to trust God Mm -hmm. and we want to obey. And yet, Oftentimes, I get in the way of that. Oftentimes, my fear gets in the way of that. Um, And I think what I would want maybe to ask you for the first question, Jennifer, is how would you encourage the listeners that might be at a place right now, and this is actually to a large degree where I am right now as well, Maybe they're in a place, I define it as the waiting room. Mm -hmm. So they're in the waiting room place right now. And in the waiting room, first off, nobody likes the waiting room. Nobody wants to be in the waiting room. And yet, exponentially, at least in my life, there's the most growth Mm -hmm. that happens in the waiting room. If I truly lean on God and trust God and acknowledge him in all my ways Mm -hmm. and ask God practically, how do I walk out Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 or Joshua 1, 9? Like, how do I walk out these principles that teach us the importance of knowing that God is there to lead us? He's there to guide us. He's there to even illuminate our path. Mm -hmm. And yet I mess that up because I get impatient. I don't like the waiting room. So, kind of a a multifaceted question, but I guess to start with, what would you say to those listeners joining us right now for this conversation to just encourage them and just say, okay, here's what God has taught me in the waiting room to really just continue to trust and continue to obey? Mm -hmm. That's a really good question. And I listen to um, T.D. Jakes a lot. He's part of my story. I had never heard of him. Sorry, Bishop Jakes. And I learned of him and watch him a lot now. Uh, But he has a lot of sermons about the waiting room. And I have had to do a lot of waiting. I'm in the waiting room right now. Um, But some of the things, and you mentioned Joshua 1.9, and that's in my notes, because that was one of the first verses. It was actually Joshua 1.7, but they say the same thing, be strong and courageous. And the Bible says that 25 times. But 365 times it says, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. So God's telling us not to be afraid. But when we're waiting, it's because he's trying to level us up, right? So we're not ready for where he's taking us yet. So he's getting us ready. So if we're getting ready by scrolling Facebook all day, we're not getting ready and we're going to be in that waiting room a while. But if we're in the word and praying and studying, then we're going to get out of that waiting room quicker. (laughs) So we have to spend our time wisely and really trust him. And then I call them God opportunities. 
but I try to walk through every open door. So like when I saw you on Facebook saying, hey, do you have a story? I was like, there's an opportunity. I'll say yes. Let's see what happens. Um, but I tried it, and here I am. Yes. So that's what I try to do is just connect with people. If I see an opportunity, if I'm invited somewhere, I, I go. So I was invited to a birthday party for someone I met during the Super Bowl because the Chiefs were in the Super Bowl here, and so I met lots of Chiefs fans, and um, then they invited me to their birthday party. I don't know her, and it was a pink party, and, like, pink is my least favorite color, and I had to wear <laughs> pink. <laughs> It's all right. Um, it was a fun party, and I'm glad I went. But I got to meet several people and share my story with several people, which is encouraging then to them, and they got to share with me, and so I made lots of connections. So I would just say in the waiting room, be in the Word and be in prayer, because the only way out of the waiting room is to be close to God. You're not hearing from Him if you're not tuning into Him. Does that make sense? Absolutely, that makes yeah. sense. Yeah. It makes me wonder, like the story of Joseph in Genesis, he has a few chapters. I think it's like 35 to like 40 or something mm-hmm, like that. Mm-hmm. And, you know, he's 17 when he gets a God-given dream, gets two dreams. Right. But the way he handles them is prideful. You're going to bow down to me, brothers, and dad and mom, and you're going to. And then he ends up getting sold into slavery. That wasn't his decision. Maybe, um, you know, it was it did a, there was a consequence of his, of his not readiness. And God knew that. But all the way through the slavery to Potiphar, putting him Mm -hmm. in charge of his house to thrown into prison. And then the prison guard putting him in charge of the prisoners, like everything God has orchestrated. Mm -hmm. And then it says two full years later. So he's still in prison. He has the the cupbearer, the Pharaoh's cupbearer. If you go read the story in Genesis, Pharaoh's cupbearer and Baker come in. They have a dream. Joseph's using his God-given gifts to use in the waiting room. God's still using him in the waiting room yes. to perfect his gifting because that's how he's going to get to the king. And then after he does his gifting to the cupbearer and the baker, they leave. The dreams come true. And then it says two full years later. So he, we don't know those, full, you know those two full years. But the fact that he's still in the waiting room using his giftings, being obedient to God. And then obviously when God says now, now. when mm-hmm. I have you know, the, the appointed time that I have for you, I'm going to release you. Um, right. So that's amazing. No, that's so good. And I love how you, again, I think we're just, God's going to keep us in this waiting room scenario because I think you're right. I think for us to understand how we trust and how we hear God's voice and how we pray and how vitally important that is, because I think even back to the waiting room, I was just recently in the ER and it's never where you want to go. I wasn't there, but I was there with a friend. And there's all these sounds and there's all these noises that are happening and and just everything is just noisy Mm -hmm. in the waiting room. Mm -hmm. And there's announcements coming across the intercom, but ultimately you're just waiting to really hear the voice from the doctor. Mm -hmm. And yet I take that illustration and that word picture and say, okay, as we pray, as we spend time with God, who is the great and mighty physician, if Mm -hmm. we're going to go back to the actual hospital... He's the one that's going to guide us. He's the one that's going to give us the direction. He's the one that gave that direction to Joseph. And every day, even though he didn't want to be in the waiting room and he didn't want to have those circumstances that he had to endure, Mm -hmm. he was still just obedient to say, okay, God, in prison, how do you want to use me today? Okay, God, as Potiphar's wife has falsely accused me of something I didn't do, Mm -hmm. how do you want to use me? Right. He just continually just said, okay, as my brothers threw me in a well, the worst scenarios... He just kept saying, God, use me. God, I want to serve you in the waiting room because it is this leveling up. And I love how you use that word, Jennifer. And maybe we'll kind of go there now, leveling up. So as you were in the waiting room and as you had a myriad of different affirmations from God to bring you here to the Valley of the Sun, Mm -hmm. uh, one being that giant red red sign that said, go, the prophetic words that came from an eight-year-old, in all these affirmations, what has some of the leveling up been? Because again, this show is really about growth mm-hmm. and we believe, and God would believe that growth is from the inside out. Mm-hmm. So in this conversation about trust and obedience, what has some of the leveling up been for you personally? Because I believe as we listen to the true voice, the voice of Jesus, mm-hmm. And as he guides us and brings us out of the waiting room, wherever he's leading us into the next promised land, the reality is there is a leveling up. 
so just encourage the listeners because I believe that's a promise. I believe as right. we are obedient in the waiting room and as we are obedient to hearing his voice, the reality is there's going to be growth that happens. There's going to be a leveling up process that happens. So what's yeah. been some of the leveling up and the growth that's happened for you personally? Yeah, well, I want to go back to your your um, waiting room at the at the emergency room because that's so good. Um, you know, Satan is the father of lies, and he's the great counterfeit. And if you think about the waiting room, and you might have an X-ray tech come in and talk to you, or you might have a nurse come talk to you, but until you hear from the doctor, like that's that's the one you really want to hear from. But we do that. With, Satan will try to counterfeit and pull our attention so many different ways, or or make us think. Like maybe I've waited too long, so now I want to jump ahead and I want to do it myself because, you know, God told me this, but it's not happening. So maybe I need to go a different way or something. And so we have to be really, really careful with what voice we're listening to um, and staying in tune with God. But then for me personally, the leveling up has been um, I am now the city leader Phoenix for a rise out of East West Ministries in Plano, Texas. Um, and I know God gave me OCJ kids on the radio. Um when Arise first happened, they said, I don't know how this is ever going to intersect with that. We we don't see how that will ever intersect, and we know that's what God's called you to, so you know, make sure this is what you're supposed to be doing. Um, and what Arise does is train and equip women to share the gospel in the streets. So we share in the streets downtown um, and go on short-term mission trips around the world, which anyone can go with us on. So, um, But uh, what I found out through that is in I'm working with aged out foster youth. There's some campuses around Phoenix where they can go live when they age out between the ages of 18 and 24, depending on their circumstances. They age out of the system and they maybe have nowhere to go. So they go to these campuses and learn job skills and things like that um, and get prepared for their adult life. And in order to work on those campuses, I have to have training, trauma training and different I mean, I've been a foster parent, so I get a lot of it, but there's a lot of training before you can work on those campuses. And guess who does the training? OCJ Kids. Mm. So they send me right back over there and go, well, you have to have training before you can can help. So um, that's just been this beautiful circle of life for me. Um, and then that God took me, part of the story that I didn't have time to tell, but he did take me to Pilgrim Rest Baptist Church in downtown Phoenix. And um, it's just, been so wonderful to meet a completely different culture, a completely different kind of church. Um, I come from a little tiny church, and this is a very big church, and I just absolutely love it to death. And being able to get involved in ministry there and do things there, it's just been wonderful. So, And God did tell me to write a book, which is also a little out of my comfort zone, and he told me to start a YouTube channel which I'm not techie and not good at. I asked him to send me a helper, like he sent Moses a helper, and he said no. He said he wanted me to learn. I have learned, but um, it's really bad at the beginning. It's really, really bad. It's still not great, but it's better than it was. But anyway, um, if I can plug it, it's at Moving Forward 1265 on YouTube. So you can see the whole story. Um, and then writing the book, that's taking me, you know, leveling me up even more to share the story and get it out so that people can learn that being obedient to God can be really scary because it is leaving my family all behind 1200 miles away and coming to the desert. (laughs) You call it the Valley of the Sun. I call it the desert. (laughs) Um, but it, it, it just builds more trust and more faith as you go. One of the things I want to actually ask Brandon, and then I want you to maybe finish out our time together and answer the question. Again, I like this visual, so, and you just mentioned this. Again, bring us back to the ER. The reality is, is that we are just really waiting for the voice and the diagnostic from the doctor. Right. And yet there's so many other voices that we get. And even just when you said that, it triggered me last weekend when I was there with a friend. Mm -hmm. He was so confused because there was almost conflicting information Mm -hmm. that we were getting from multiple people that were coming in. And then as soon as the doctor arrived, the first thing she did is she walked in, she shut the door behind her, she sat down with us, and she fully had a back and forth conversation. This is what's happening. This is what's going on with you. And I think the question is this, is that in these moments of us standing at a crossroad in these moments of us being in the waiting room, 
there can be a myriad of voices Mm -hmm. and a myriad of opinions. Mm -hmm. The question is for all of us to really glean from this for both you guys, what are some of the other voices and what are some of the things that get in the way of us really not listening or not being obedient or not having the trust with God that might hinder us from really walking out of the waiting room into the next season of where God's leading us. What are those things? What are the emotions? What are sometimes the things that get in the way? Because again, we get this wrong sometimes. I get Mm -hmm. this wrong sometimes. Mm -hmm. So what are the factors and what are the other voices and the things that Satan might use to really get in the way of this? Brandon, we'll start with you. The first thing that comes to mind is uh, doing, creating an Ishmael, so works-based, right? So going back to what you said about, oh, I have a promise from God, but I don't see it happening just yet. I don't even know if it's going to happen because at this point I've waited so long. I think I heard him wrong or I think something, something went off. I did something to forfeit my promise, which isn't biblical, by the way, but it's something like that, right? So it's like I'll take matters in my own hands. And so I think for my life, because I'm in a huge wilderness, I've been in one for 11 and a half years and still in it. And my biggest thing that currently is works about, okay, cool, God, I believe what you've said, but I don't think I have ideas to get it done. So I'm going to try some things that I need you to bless because things need to get done. Mm -hmm. You know, X, Y, Z is happening. I'm going to be 26. (laughs) He's so old. For for the for the promises that I have, I feel like age matters. But keep going. Whatever. It's one of those things where it's like the vo- the main voice is like works because then because then the voice that comes with works is God's waiting for me to do X in order for the promise to be fulfilled, which means I have to get myself there. I have to get myself to X. X has to be produced by me in order for God to work and move. And I don't see that in the Bible. I think God brings you to X. And then he moves. Mm -hmm. You don't bring yourself to X because you don't know where X is, what X. Mm -hmm. Then you can just be throwing things out Mm -hmm. and hoping something sticks. And at some point, if it doesn't stick, you get frustrated and start creating things out of your own human, you know, efforts. Um, So I think the biggest thing for me is just not making sure that work, the work set mindset is what I'm running after. And instead, I'm running after the Jesus mindset um, to make sure that he's creating the promise and me not creating a false promise. That's really good. Right. How about you and, to finish well, things out, Jen? Yeah. What you have to remember is, because Satan's the father of lies and he's the big counterfeiter, right? But he uses fleshly things and worldly things where it's a spiritual battle. Mm. So the battle is God's, but Satan will always use worldly things to distract us, like trying to do it yourself. Mm-hmm. Or I, it's an age thing. Look at Sarah and Abraham. Mm-hmm. It was an age thing. God, God's going to do it when God's going to do it. Yeah. And, but Satan will always jump in with worldly and fleshly things to, to confuse us. So we can kind of look at it and go, if, it, if this is a worldly thing that I'm fighting with, I can, I can say that's not, that's not God. Mm-hmm. But it is a spiritual battle, and it definitely belongs to the Lord, Absolutely. as we all know. Mm-hmm. So that 365 times it says, don't be afraid, don't be afraid. Yeah. If he, if he said it, it's a promise. That's right. And he'll fulfill it. Yep. So. Yeah. yeah, that's so well said. This has been around a long time, this acronym, but I just heard it this last week. And I think it ties into that exact reference of knowing that there's one Bible verse for all of us for every single day of the year that really talks about us being courageous and not being afraid and not mm-hmm. having fear. And fear in this acronym is false evidence appearing real. Mm-hmm. And I think that Satan's really good at continually manipulating mm-hmm. all of these different influences mm-hmm. and things that are really shiny, mm-hmm. really attractive from the worldly sense. And yet God says, no, that's a counterfeit. Right. That's a counterfeit. And sometimes we do it ourselves, though, too. Sometimes we blame Satan when it's just us. Like, yeah, right. it's been a long day, and I don't really want to think about all these things God's told me to do, so I'm just going to scroll Facebook all day. And right. that's on me. Like, exactly. <laughs> yeah. But... Truth. Yeah, we waste a lot of time. We waste a lot of time, and time is precious. And hey, I'm way older than you, so time is, it's all God. Yeah, true. Never too old, never too young. True. Yeah, true. Well, again, what a great conversation to be able to, for all of us, to be able to walk into a place of saying, Lord, we truly want to 
have joyful obedience. We want to grow in the ability we have every day to trust you. Mm -hmm. And not just trust you, but trust you with all of our hearts. To not lean on our own understandings, but to acknowledge him in all of our ways. And again, that verse promises mm -hmm. us that he will make our path straight. Right. In his timing. In his timing. And he will bring us to the place of X. And we have to truly understand that we can trust him in that place. So, Jennifer, thank you again so much for being yeah. on the show today. And yeah, thanks for being having our guest. me. Real quick, final thoughts. Where can they find you? I know you mentioned the YouTube page. Where can they find you? We have about 30 seconds left. Jennifer J67. That's Jennifer and J is J A Y E 67 on Instagram and Twitter. And, um, Moving Forward 1265 on YouTube. And don't make fun or laugh at my technology issues. <laughs> it is so raw. Um, uh, where else? Fa I'm on Facebook. Find me there. Um, Jennifer Ferguson. I use my middle initial as my last name on the YouTube channel. But the book coming soon, A Thousand Ways to Die in Arizona. Love it. All right. Well, Brandon, it's good to be back with you. and. It's good to be doing 1% better again with you. Thanks again for tuning in. Thanks for listening in. What a blessing. What great joy we have to be able to be led by God to have these conversations. Have an amazing day. We will talk to you real soon. Take care.